Shao Kahn! You will bow to me. Never. Mortal Kombat Conquest was a martial arts television series that aired in 1998, based on the popular fighting game franchise of the same name created in 1992, a prequel to the 1995 Mortal Kombat movie about a dark fantasy fictional world about a great tournament created by ruling deities known as Elder Gods, where the greatest fighters across all the worlds in the universe come together to battle for dominance. And if a realm can accumulate 10 straight victories against another realm, the victor earns the right to conquer or merge with them. However, if the challenging realm is defeated, then the defender's realm is safe for another generation. The tournament is the only permissible way for a realm to invade and merge with another, and any violations against the rules is an act of treason and will be dealt with accordingly by the creators of the universe themselves. Mortal Kombat Conquest is a fun, fantastical, dark, martial arts adventurous show that brought the first Mortal Kombat tale to life, as well as expand and build on the success of the original 1995 classic movie, while capturing the feel and essence of the source material exceptionally well for what it was. It wasn't an amazing show, but it certainly makes a mockery out of most of the pretentious and throwaway lesser shows of today, and most adaptations of video games made into motion picture. So let's get into it. Untried yet deadly, his approach will be as silent as new fallen snow, his attack as fierce as a wind-driven blizzard, his devastation as brutal as winter's relentless kill. He is complete. Mortal Kombat Conquest takes place centuries ago where the planet Earth, referred to as Earthrealm, is the most desirable planet in the universe, where a ruthless and menacing tyrant Shao Kahn wants to add to his collection of conquered realms to merge with his realm Outworld. The series begins where Shao Kahn's champion is one more victory away from claiming the planet in the Mortal Kombat tournament, when Raiden the God of Thunder and Protector of Earthrealm summons his best fighter, a monk warrior named Kung Lao, who defeats Outworld sorcerer Shang Tsung, wins the tournament and spares his life. With Earthrealm saved, with Raiden's guidance, Kung Lao begins the next step of his journey of training the next generation of warriors who would give their lives to save the Earth, where along the way he meets two fighters. Ciro, a reliable, strong former bodyguard, and Taja, a feisty charmer, former professional thief, schemer, and con artist with a tragic past. It's an odd trio of characters from different backgrounds and cultures with objectives that may not line up with each other, but along the way they work together for the mutual goal of protecting Earthrealm from dark forces and form a close partnership and friendship. Meanwhile, Shang Tsung has been banished to the Cobalt Mines of Shokan by Shao Kahn for his defeat in the tournament, where he crosses paths with a woman named Vorpex, a princess of a legendary race of Amazonian warriors called the Kreans, and forms a reluctant partnership with her to free himself from the mines and get revenge against Kung Lao. While Shao Kahn gathers and sends many fighters in the name of their true emperor to hunt down and kill the Mortal Kombat champion in the hopes that he'll be able to defy the Elder God's rules and conquer Earthrealm once and for all. And that's a brief summary of the show and your setups. For the most part, this is a character show with a lot going on, about good versus evil and friendship. A great aspect about the show is that it knows exactly what it is and doesn't have pretensions to be anything more. The world in which the characters exist in Conquest is mature, complex, and often morally gray. There are many individuals and groups, some within different factions vying for influence and power. Some being dedicated and idealistic to their cause, some cynical and ruthless, and some that just want to be left alone, but no matter their outlook, the writing is solid and balanced that you can emphasize with almost anyone's position. The world of the show is also often unforgiving, brutal, and hard, where death can come without warning and people are forced to make tough choices. It's a very adult show where things are not going to be predictable and good people don't always survive, and that is the core essence of Conquest. It's grounded and smart. You were born to be a warrior. 
If you continue to win in Mortal Kombat, you'll live to witness all your friends die. All of them. Do you see that your entire realm is at stake? It's the burden you must carry. The world of Conquest feels believable and well thought out with its strong fantastical and supernatural elements. Some of them like Outworld for example are well crafted with small creative and cool set pieces that are haunting, dark, and effects that work. The special effects are certainly products of their time and it's 90s action, adventure, fantasy television in all its glory. But the attention to detail is great, practical, and believable, including many of the costumes and wardrobe, especially for the women which are cool and very creative. And the show's combination of techno and orchestral sympathy scoring adds so much more. In fact, the music in general in Conquest is awesome, with many light motifs and musical cues that are guaranteed to stick with you or even get your head banging, especially during the martial arts scenes which are all energizing and playful, giving vibes in a way like a Mortal Kombat game stage. <laughs> The characters in the show are smart, resourceful, and lethal, with good performances from a mostly solid cast. The clear focus of the series mostly is Kung Lao, played by Paolo Montalban, an honorable, focused monk and master of martial arts from the Order of Light, who lives with major regrets every day of his life, but willing to fight and protect Earthrealm against evil forces, no matter the challenge or opponent. The two supporting original heroes created for the show are quite good too. Ciro is reliable and lighthearted, but he's also hard-headed who wants to follow in his father's footsteps as a protector, and over the course of the series he is eager to please and prove himself worthy and a better fighter at times over Kung Lao. Taja is charming, sly, and skillful who used the only talent she knew to survive being a thief. She tries to make friends and goes out of her ways to achieve something, and she develops self-confidence, respect, and logic working and fighting alongside Kung Lao and Ciro. Raiden is a sassy, sometimes odd, and wise god of thunder who guides and watches over at times the three protagonists, appearing out of nowhere offering clues and hints as to how to deal with the problems at hand, but not to tell them the solution directly as it may jeopardize Mortal Kombat and risk many of his rights as the protector of Earthrealm. But of course you can't have a good versus evil story without some good bad guys, and many of the villains in the show are very good, many of course from the games, plus some entirely new ones. For example, Kiri, a half-human, half-reptilian fighter, wants to build an army to annihilate the human race as well as destroy the kingdom of Shao Kahn. And actress Sung Hai Lee makes her charming, beautiful, sadistic, interesting, and homicidal, and the character feels right at home with the source material and shows playful tone. The Shadow Priests, which are stage background characters in the games, are fleshed out with great powers and abilities. The characters are very similar in fashion and design to the Nazgul from J.A.R. Tokens The Lord of the Rings. Immortal, magical, bodiless slaves live to serve and obey their master. They're experts in the art of torture and interrogation and fight with brute force. And of course there's the main antagonist Shao Kahn himself. This character is absolutely fantastic across the board. He's clever, theatrical, ruthless, powerful, and dominant. Right from the start when he's on full display criticizing and using his powers to punish his champion, you know this guy isn't fucking around. And actor Jeffrey Meek who plays him totally owns the role. The costume and appearance is not entirely accurate to the quality from the games, rocking instead a more medieval, crusader-looking design and appearance, but the performance is spot on, with his dark, seductive, and booming voice that radiates power power and menace. And he sells every line like he really means it, and the character maintains his air of danger and menace all the way until the final episode. I doubt my stepdaughter's loyalty. Why not yours? Because there is no reason. No reason! No reason. Your family dead at my head. I murdered your king. I crushed your realm. I assume treachery. Loyalty, I question. 
A really cool and interesting trivia, actor Jeffrey Meek won both auditions for the roles of Raiden and Shao Kahn, and the casting director wanted him to play both characters in the show. He accepted, but it was really hard for him to play both characters at the same time, especially vocal physically, but he loved it and you could tell he was just having a hell of a time and deserves all kinds of respect. During the auditions, he didn't even prepare for the role of Shao Kahn, because he was so pissed off that he wasn't given the part for Raiden which he really wanted to play. So he let it rip in the scene for the character to scare and spit on the producers, casting and production teams present for five minutes. They thanked him for his audition, and hours later he got the call he won the part, including the role he wanted. Talk about bizarre, but totally worth it in the end, both cinematically and in terms of pop culture. Even the supporting cast are all good in their roles as well. Vorpax, played by Tracy Douglas, is a sly, pretty, self-aggrandizing woman who maneuvers herself into the lives and businesses of other people, working with, betraying, or threatening relationships for her own personal gain. She gradually transforms from a humble servant into a deceiver with a strong desire for power, a consistent theme which is a staple in the Mortal Kombat franchise. The acting isn't the greatest, but they all show plenty of emotions, which is certainly better than good acting with no emotions. It's also a good example of diverse casting done right, and it never feels contrived, forced, or preachy, unlike most lesser shows made today. The philosophy behind every episode in the show is complex, and it treats themes like treachery, trust, sexuality, inner peace, ambition, search for power, and etc. Some episodes revolve around a different character, shedding light on their personal history or backstory, then there's fillers with some revolving around different factions like the Black Dragon, the Lin Kuei, or the Zaterans. It starts out pretty tame, but each episode has some fun character moments, intrigue, and martial arts, and it develops into a pretty deep character-driven show. And when the classic characters from the game start showing up, the series gets really interesting. Did he send you instead? He knows who should run things. You and your snake creature? Better that than a bag of ice. Ice kills. Wanna die again, dead man? After you, ice man. Conquest was a hit when it aired in October 1998 to May of 1999. The programming for the show was a bit messy at times, but it was very well received, especially from Mortal Kombat fans. The show was planned for two seasons, but due to an unfortunate budget residual with neither the distributor nor the production company wanting to pay for it, the show was cancelled. Which was really disappointing because the show could have been even more, and the series ends on a massive cliffhanger. Mortal Kombat Conquest is a charming, entertaining, grim show that treats the Mortal Kombat source material well, giving characters the respect and reverence they're due, while also taking some of them in new, interesting directions. It does an excellent job of adapting and mixing the elements from the games, while creating a storyline that had great potential and should have lasted longer. If you're a Mortal Kombat fan, especially if you're in the camp for the story, characters, and lore, I wholeheartedly recommend you give Conquest a go. You'll have a hell of a time with this show. Finish him! <laughs> Excellent.